Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to talk about skirts, brims, rafts, and supports. Those are the structures that a slicer produces in order to print complex objects. Objects like most of the models shown here, such as these cats, where the chin area would droop. It wouldn't hold up properly without supports. I'm going to demonstrate these techniques by first looking at the theory behind supports when you need them, when you don't. Then I'm going to show you how to configure them in Cura version 4. However, everything I'm going to show you today applies to any slicer because the concepts are all the same. This is the first of a two-part series. The second part, I will demonstrate a number of different tools that you can use for removing supports and how to do it reliably and easily. Okay, stay tuned and let's learn something together. All of the slides that you're going to see on the screen today will be linked in the description down below. So let's get started by looking at this diagram on the screen to understand when you need supports. In general, a 3D printer prints by printing a layer at a time, then moving up and printing another layer. When those layers are stacked like bricks, one on top of the other, there's no problem at all. However, if you want to cantilever or extend beyond the wall, beyond the structure, then you need something to hold up that cantilevered structure. So let's look at this diagram. In this diagram, if you'll see the top example on the left-hand side, it is labeled 90 degrees. That's measured from the vertical to the angle of the cantilevered feature. A 90 degree feature will not work in a 3D printer without support. The next feature down is a 30 degree feature. Now a 30 degree feature will work depending on the length. So think about taking a board and extending it out on an angle. As it gets longer and longer, it will get heavier. There will be more gravitational pull. It'll attempt to pull down. If it's very short, you'll have no problem. In general, 30 degree cantilevered features work just fine. In the next example, we have a 50 degree feature. That feature may or may not work depending on the printer. So let's look for a moment and an example print and you'll see this is a 30 degree feature. It printed just fine without a support. This is a 45 degree feature that also printed fine. However, this is a 60 degree angle right here that required supports or it would fall over, it would droop. And in this particular case here, we have a 90 degree feature which also would fall over or droop. We'll look in a moment at this feature right here, which is also 90 degrees, but it, because it is bridged to another vertical structure, it is supported by the actual model. In this example, we're looking at a bridge. A bridge is where you have two columns and there is a structure on top of it. In general, almost every printer can bridge a span of five millimeters or a bit more. Some printers, depending on the filament used, the temperature printed can bridge as far as 50 millimeters. That's something that will be printer dependent. In this particular example, we have here a bridge, so you can measure it, that is 20 millimeters. And you can see there's no problem at all. This printed just fine. In this example, we're trying to solve a different problem. If you have a vertical structure, it needs to have sufficient area touching the print bed in order to stay vertical so it doesn't fall over. 
And that print bed might be moving back and forth or side by side very rapidly, depending on the configuration of the printer. That's one of the advantages of the Ender 5, is the print bed only moves up and down. But on the Prusa MK3, i3 MK3, uh, on the Monoprice CR10, on most Creality printers, the print bed is moving back and forth very rapidly. So there needs to be good adhesion to the print bed. The ad adhesion is done by printing a surface underneath. Let's look at the screen again. If the surface is completely underneath and built up, it's called a raft. If the surface is connected on the sides, but not underneath, it's called a brim. There's a third option in the slicer configuration, that's called a skirt, and that really doesn't help with adhesion. However, it does help the filament begin to flow properly before printing the actual object. In this case, I've loaded this particular print, which was produced in Tinkercad, and it'll be available, linked in the notes, in Thingiverse, into Cura. And I've angled the print bed so you can see underneath. Any area that is red is an area that Cura is estimating is going to need either support or adhesion assistance. So you'll see that the arm on the right, which I believe was a 60 degree overhang, will need support. The 90 degree overhang will need support on the left. The way you turn on support in Cura is that if you are in the recommended mode, there are two checkboxes. One checkbox will put supports over under cantilevered items. That's called support. The other will add plastic on the base for adhesion. That's called adhesion. If you go into the custom mode, you'll see there are many, many options that you can set for support. The, in the case of Cura, the notes that come up when you mouse over an option are absolutely excellent. So there's no reason for me to go through all of these individual options. In general, to get started, if you start with the defaults, which are zigzag, and leave everything else alone, it'll be a good starting point. There is one additional item that I find in particular useful. And that is that in this particular case, you'll see the supports go to the top of the, to the bottom of the feature. However, it is possible to say, to inform the slicer that you wanna put a roof on top of the supports, a solid piece of plastic. And then you'll have one solid piece of plastic, the actual feature, and a second solid piece of plastic, the top of the supports, within close proximity. That will make it easier to remove the supports. However, if you turn on Enable Support Interface, it will use additional plastic, and therefore it will print slightly slower. So here's an example of the model I've been showing you, loaded into Cura. I've sliced the model, I'm in preview mode, and you can see where it would add supports. The supports are shown in blue. Now, Cura does have the capability to selectively block the auto generation of supports. To block the auto generation of supports, you click on the staircase on the left-hand side, and then you click on one of the red areas of the model where you would like to block support. And it will add a little square there. Those squares can then be dragged around to configure exactly where you wanna block supports. That is the technique I've used to ensure that there are no supports in this particular feature, because it is bridged, I recognized it did not need supports, but Cura did not. Now, supports do take longer to print. 
They're difficult to take off. So there are some techniques you can look at for eliminating supports. In the left hand example, that is a feature that would require supports. It's greater than 50 degrees. However, if I put a chamfer there, if I round that edge instead of a direct angle, no individual edge is more than 45 degrees and it would not require supports. Likewise, if I add supports manually, and in this particular case, because the size of the cantilevered area is now very small, even though it's opened, it is likely it would print correctly in the rightmost example. There is an option in the experimental features of Cura for a new type of support called tree supports. If you're going to use this, you turn off regular supports. You go to experimental and you click on tree supports and you'll see here an example of what it does. It does produce less pr plastic. It basically su produces supports that have a trunk and then a set of branches um, going up to the cantilevered object. Um, many people find that these supports are easier to remove than traditional supports. It's something you can experiment with model to model. In Cura version 4, they did work on tree supports to make the generation time, the slicing time, much faster. So here you'll see two pictures, um, which you can see more clearly, of my support model that I use for testing supports. You'll see on the rightmost side the example of the bridged area where there are no supports. Okay, I hope that that explanation of supports when to use them, the difference between a brim, a raft, and um, traditional supports was also clear. Remember a skirt, the third option there is just a line of filament that's printed on the print bed uh, outside of the area where your actual model is, and that's used to start the filament running smoothly through the extruder. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the video, recommend the videos to other, and leave notes before. As importantly, remember there's another video coming where I'll show you the various tools that I use, including a hot knife, which I think is the best way to remove these complex structures, these supports um, from a model like this. Thanks so much, have a great day, and let's keep learning things together.